I'm in Kelvin Gove Art Gallery, which has a vast array of artifacts, one of which I noticed upstairs is the banner from the Mahdi, which was a battle that took place in Khartoum, just outside Khartoum in the 19th century against the Mahdi, against colonial forces of the British Empire. Now, it indicates that the, the British Empire and the West has had a long history of engagement with our lands. For us, what's interesting is that we need to now start to discuss issues around identity. So I'll be doing a course on Islam in the West. This is actually a course which focuses on three main issues, one of which is the religious response to being a minority in the West, which essentially is called minority fit, and it's an attempt to create a reimagination of fit for minority situations, which takes into account their weakness, essentially. Also related to the course is the idea of identity, to what degree do Muslims feel part and parcel of these societies within which we find ourselves and also the idea of Islamophobia as well which is becoming quite prominent. One of the things that is really really important is that we understand certain key issues in our discourse, one of which is minority fiqh. Minority fiqh is the understanding that there's a special type of ruling for people that live in minority situations. So this course which starts in the 12th will have an exacting study of minority fiqh and in doing so we'll explore the reasons for its rise and as yet, I would say unexplained fall from Muslim discourse in the West. It was also focused on the issue of belonging, as, as well as the issue of obviously Islamophobia, but also track how identity politics in general has managed to remodel uh, Muslim religious priorities in the West. So the rise of Islamophobia is pretty clear. If you look at public opinion polls, you'll find the sense that the British public doesn't see our faith as being part and parcel of this the fabric of this society but also most western societies and this has led i think to this attempt by muslims to frame themselves essentially as victims and to what degree from a religious perspective from a theological and uh, fiqh perspective or maqasid perspective is that a reasonable position to take but also we were looking at the the, the majority of the course we'll be looking at the religious ethical um, discourse of minority fiqh because it looks at harnessing the full weight of um, our legal tradition to provide solutions to the difficult situations that people find themselves in. And so you have issues such as um, a woman who embraces a faith but then is married to somebody, does her, does her contract or her marriage civil contract or her legal contract dissolve at that point, which is what traditional scholars would say, or is there, because of the minority situation she's in, do we have a special ruling for that? The presence of Muslims in non-Muslim lands as well, you know, issues around Dar al-Harb, Dar al-Islam, these old concepts, are they redundant now or are they still as relevant as always? And given the increased prejudice, can we envisage Islamic law in providing mechanisms by which it can strengthen communities, our own community, in the face of those types of um, challenges? So this course will also have case studies on um, you know the whole issue after 9/11 of you know Yusuf Al Qardabi famously rahimahullah issued a, 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 a edict on this and the permissibility of fighting for uh, Western forces was a very famous or infamous issue. Um, citizenship as well is a very important um, question as well. Religious status is extremely important. Inheritance. There's so many issues that relate to abode. And so on the 12th of November, I'll be starting the first of four weeks of detailed study on the topics of minority fiqh, its rise and fall, on the issue of Islamophobia, and also on the issue of identity and essentially identity politics, which has taken over discourse in Muslim circles over the last, I would say, 10 years. And that for me is like the canary in the mine, which indicates that our discourse is, in a sense, lost, in a sense, it is requiring some sort of critical analysis and revival. And this is one of the reasons why I think we're doing this course in uh, Islamophobia Awareness Month, which is running in November, to start to get the debate going and engagement going on this, this, on this issue, because I think there has been a, a complete lack of discussions on these types of topics. And these are essentially are the core issues that are facing our community. So even issues such as the LGBT issue is underpinned by this discussion. So if you were one of the students that did the course when I um, conducted it at the beginning of the year, you will know that a lot of the issues were related to the degree to which Muslims can harness partnerships with other identity groupings, minority groupings in society, and to what degree is that beneficial and to what degree is that 
not beneficial. So join me for our first for our first class on the 12th of November, which we're running for four weeks with extended Q and A. Which I remember for the gender course, there was a Q and A which lasted over, I believe, three and a half hours, which we had to cut short because there's so many questions, and it indicates that the topic is one that everybody needs to you know get to grips with. So inshallah, I hope to see you there in the course. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.